Alright, today I'm going to give you guys a detailed look at all three of these diseased figures. And these are by DC Collectibles, which uh, soon to be taken over by McFarn Toys, uh, most likely somewhere in the 2022. So uh, let's start off with Green Lantern. Alright, and here's the Green Lantern figure. And uh, if you own any of the um, uh, this other line, uh, I think it's the I icons. No, essentials. Uh, if you own the essentials line, then uh, you probably have this uh, Green Lantern figure. Uh, it's exactly the same figure, but uh, this time it has uh, different hands, more of a zombie-like hands, and uh, blood splatter all over, and a different head sculpt. Just more of a diseased uh, zombie look head sculpt here. Really nice. I think DC Collectibles did a fantastic job with the sculpting on this figure. And you can see all the blood splatter. Oops. So all three figures got exactly the same articulation points. So I'm just going to go over one and then the rest of the two I'm just going to show you detail look on them. And uh, when you first get these figures, uh, it's best to um, heat them with a hair dryer because a lot of the joints are stuck. Uh, they are really hard to move even now well once you uh, let it sit for a while uh, the joints tend to get uh, really hard to hard to move here you can see the neck there's a hinge joint right here and then uh, when it's uh, attached to the head it's on a ball joint so it gives you that um, head movement uh, head tilt up where you could kind of have him hunch over and he's still looking straight which is what I prefer because he is a zombie so he's not gonna walk um, uh, straight and uh, arch back and everything he's gonna be hunched over so um, as for the shoulders there's a hinge joint in here and uh, let's see this is how far up it could go and of course you could do 360 rotation and then bicep there's a swivel joint and then you can see double jointed elbows which allows him to go that far and then there's a hinge joint around the wrist to move up and down which is nice and the abdominal one this is the hardest one to move uh, so I had to use a hair dryer soften up this one quite a bit in order for me to crack it uh, even now it's a little hard to move uh, so you really have to crack it because uh, it is really stiff so uh, again when you first get it it's gonna be straight like this but of course again for zombie I prefer it to be hunched over so I like it like this way so much better and then uh, ball jointed oh there is a swivel around the waist right here and then ball jointed hips cut joint around the thigh the knees could bend and let's see could give you about that much range and then there's a ball hinge uh, ankle and no toes articulation so that's pretty much it for the articulation with these figures uh, again I like them quite a bit and, uh, I'm a DC fan more than I'm a Marvel fan but uh, yeah as far as figures uh, yeah there are a lot more D uh, a lot more Marvel stuff that are more interesting and more articulated than uh, a lot of the DC stuff. Uh, the McFarlane stuff is okay, but uh, I think, um, I guess to keep costs down, uh, I just feel like they aren't, well, I mean, sculpting wise, they're really, really nice. Uh, it's just sometimes I feel like the plastic is a little weird to me, but uh, this is very solid. Uh, joints you do have to be super careful uh, heat it up before you start moving them because otherwise you might end up breaking them but uh, yeah it is a really good looking uh, figure and uh, posability wise I mean uh, as far as the hips go up to about 90 so he could do cool poses cool zombie poses but not dynamic poses I don't think you're gonna have this figure do dynamic poses anyway so as zombie wise he could do hunched over like this he could look very uh, very zombie like oh forgot to mention there is a swivel around the boots too top of the boots all right and here's Batman and exactly the same body uh, same articulation point 
Uh, the only difference is that he has a cape, so it limits its. Uh, no, it didn't limit his range, but uh, he well, straight out of the box, he's gonna look a little weird if you give him this pose, the hunch over pose, because the cape will flare out a little bit more. And what I did to remedy that is that um, I use a hair dryer to really soften up the uh, the cape, and then I just weighed it down uh, to a curve right here so it's kind of uh, going to the contour of his back now and uh, it will flow very well straight down to his body and just like that so he could stand and the cape will look uh, very decent it kind of drapes it down like his body is uh, so even in the hunch hunch over pose uh, his cape is looking quite nice and there are no accessories whatsoever uh, with these figures and uh, not even the base so uh, and there's no peg holes on the bottom of their feet so you can't even put them uh, on one of your existing bases either so yeah look at that head sculpt really nice and look at all the blood coming out of his mouth really good looking Batman and then uh, you can see tear on this uh, uniform there and there's some blood over there this emblem I believe this is the new 52 version of Batman uh, I'm not quite sure there's the cape and there's the rest of him and again exact same post I uh, exact same uh, articulation points as uh, Green Lantern and lastly we have Joker here and uh, you can look at that face really good looking face how intense that look is and uh, look at all the blood on his face and around the mouth and even on the body uh, one thing I didn't like about this Joker is that uh, he can't really do hunched over because uh, the jacket he has on he has these two um, what do you call these uh, I forgot what they're called there's a specific name for these uh, winglets or something um, if you give him a hunch over pose is um, these these pieces is gonna flare outward and uh, I try using a hairdryer to soften up the plastic but it will just not stay in that position so if you have his body hunched over like this then uh, look at that those winglets will come flying outward uh, it doesn't look good at all it doesn't look natural this is actually how the Batman will look if you if you didn't heat up the cape enough and then weigh it down uh, then it's gonna look like this so yeah it doesn't work for Joker and uh, I find it the, even harder for the Joker to move because uh, the joints are so so tight uh, not really tight they're sticking together I think it's because the the paint they use and then uh, mainly the bicep that's the the most trouble I had um, I use hair dryer to soften up the plastic I use uh, well, uh, a, well, well, a freezer to freeze the plastic to make it harder so it's easier to to move this portion to to break it but uh, it didn't work either way so I uh, ended up heating it again and then just uh, moving it back and forth slightly here and there and then I used a flathead screwdriver to try to pry it in there a little bit to free up the plastic and uh, I got it to move now so that's good and uh, yeah Joker's great uh, he looks fantastic um, but uh, he's not gonna look good with any zombie like poses uh, even though he's completely a zombie right now uh, with all the blood just uh, but he doesn't look good with his uh, doing a hunch over pose but uh, if you take the jacket off it is removable uh, it might be I think there might be a couple of did they glue down this at all? I don't remember because uh, I think they glue down two portions of it. I think up in the shoulder somewhere up here. They, they, uh, there, are, there are two grooves up here for you to uh, attach the, um, the cape on, uh, the, the, the jacket on. And then I think back here, there's a little rectangular shape back here too. A piece of plastic that uh, is indented uh, into the body for, for the jacket to to fit over and um, yeah if you take the jacket off his articulation is great he could do very very cool dynamic poses but uh, with the with the jacket on it just looks weird 
it looks weird for for these two pieces to be flaring upward uh, when he's doing dynamic poses so if you could find fabric outfit uh, that would be great uh, to put on this joker he's got a really really good looking face too love this uh, head sculpt here even with all the blood so yeah this is a fantastic looking figure I like it a lot so there you have it uh, here are the three figures uh, I do like it a lot with uh, McFarlane taking over I don't know whether they'll continue on with this line or not um, let me do a comparison with uh, with one of the their McFarlane figures um, so here I have Green Lantern from the um, from from McFarlane toys and uh, you can see he is a little bit bigger than the Joker and his head is much bigger than the Joker and uh, even next to Green Lantern he's not gonna fit in well because uh, the head is just oh sorry because his head is just too big in comparison with uh, with the DC collectibles line yeah so yeah they're not gonna go together uh, but uh, with uh, McFarlane, like I was saying, uh, with McFarlane taking over this line, I mean with the uh, DC collectibles, hopefully uh, this line will continue because there are still a lot of uh, zombies to be made if they choose to. And um, I hope if they do take over and make these figures, uh, make these characters, then uh, hopefully they'll stay in this size, these uh, 6 inch size, instead of the new 7 inch that McFarlane's doing. So hopefully these will stay, and uh, yeah. So there you go. Uh, this is the DC collectibles disease line. Uh, thanks for watching.